Hey beautiful, how you doing today? Welcome back to the channel, or welcome if this is your first time joining us, please make sure you hit subscribe. Otherwise, let's get going. So, this video, uh, how do gay guys get ready for the biz? How do they get ready for sex in prison? It actually came about because of a comment that I had seen, and I had been thinking about making a video on this topic, to be honest with you. Shout out to you, Boogie. <laughs> Uh, you know, shout out to you. Definitely, it's your comment that made me decide, like, yeah, I actually, I've been wanting to talk about this, actually, because it's pretty interesting. So, I'm going to describe two ways of how gay guys, like, you know, get ready, or it's two different types of gay guys of how they get ready. You have, if you're just a single queen who is loose and you're just, you know, you never know what the day will bring. Um, typically, they start their preparation first thing in the morning. I didn't know this because when I was in prison, I wasn't just, like, making sure my butt was nice and clean for anybody to just dig up in there, you know, after chow or <laughs> in the middle of wreck or something like that during class. Like, I wasn't the type of person that just was going to do that, you know what I'm saying? But ideally, most queens, they like to just be ready just every day for anything that might happen because it is such a normal occurrence as I've said several times on this channel it's such a normal occurrence for guys to hit on you regularly like literally I know sometimes people say things that are just like exaggerated or a little bit you know dramatic or something like that and it's kinda like okay this is the general like idea but you're making it sound like you know, the most, I'm not doing that, like, I'm straight up telling you, just like, you know, somebody says, oh, I go to school five days a week, I have to get up at six o'clock every morning, you know what I mean, in order to go to school, and even then, that's kind of exaggerated, because you have Saturday and Sunday off, this is a seven day, a, like, yeah, seven days a week type of occurrence, literally, if you're a gay person in prison, a homosexual, especially if you're young, I would think, I don't even think really like attractiveness has to do with it. Of course, you know, the more attractive you are or whatever, you know, but even then it's uh, different. It's not necessarily the more attractive you are. It's the more women, womanly you appeal to guys because they're, they're like one guy comes to mind. I, I want to say like several guys, but you know, probably more than just one, but one guy in particular comes to my mind. I've already made a video about him, a uh, story time video. Maybe you caught that video where I was talking about the gay guy who he played football when he was younger and he still works out and he had like a banging body. He really had a great body, like, you know, nice broad chest, thick arms, big thunder thighs, and this round booty that, you know, she, he, like to, um, have tight tailored jeans hugging their butt, you know, and, um, to me, that's a knockout, this guy was hot, you know, like, had that nice chocolate skin, like, hot guy, and he was smart, he was just a real intellectual type of person, and he loved, um, intellectually stimulating conversation like he loved conversation that really made you think and kind of like dive deep into like theory and philosophy behind surface type of concepts like he was he was a really you know intellectual person um so yeah to me he's a great catch and he looked amazing in the gay community he would be somebody who is just sought after but out here, but in there, he was, don't get me wrong, he still was hounded all the time, but he didn't necessarily appeal to everybody or even most of the people in the community, the gay community of prison, because he didn't really look like a woman, even though he tried to act like one, he, he had a, a soft voice, not necessarily a high voice, but like a, a soft voice, a soft way about the way he talked and everything, and he did do his eyebrows, and he used to like to paint like makeup on his eye his eyelids and, and stuff like that <laughs> and he kept his lips nice and glossy you know they they use Vaseline in there to just keep them lips nice and glossy you know um but still in all he had the body of a better looking man than more than half the dudes in there you know what I'm saying that's intimidating for them because they want a dainty you know person impersonating a, a woman so 
the more feminine you appeal to the guys, the more attention you'll get. But nevertheless, every single day, gay people are pursued by the men in prison. Not every man in prison, but a lot of them. And even hell, even if it's just 20 out of a thousand of them, all 20 is going to be, not all 20, but you'll have like three today, two tomorrow, five the next day, one the day after that, for the day after that, like, you know what I mean? It's, and then, you know, a recycle of somebody that tried to you last week is gonna try to talk to you again today. Like, it's every day that you're there. So that's how a lot of queens end up breaking down and becoming hoes, or like me, they become isolated, you know, and they just don't talk to anybody. <laughs> but if you are somebody that is just single and you're just, you know, casually, talking to guys, you know, it's definitely a hustle for the queens to, um, you know, pursue the guys in order to get the things that they need. They make sure that they're clean. So they wake up in the morning. This is literally, I've had two different queens tell me this. And after that, I stopped asking because I, I could tell that people, they definitely would be prepared because you'd hear rumors about uh, so-and-so messing around with whoever in the gym, so-and-so. Uh, doing whatever during class or in the laundry building or you know in medical like you know there's there's just areas where you can go sometimes and sometimes they're not even really in necessarily private areas like the medical building for example it's a you walk into the building and then it's a hallway where everybody's just kind of like waiting like near the the doors like maybe like right when you walk in it, there's a hallway all the way to the back and in the front is like seven chairs where people are waiting to just go into the actual medical area department or whatever but down that hall you might see you know some people sometimes just kicking it and just talking maybe they're doing some deals and they they just don't want people over here in their conversation or you know you never know you'll walk you'll walk in and you see down the hall so and so talking with the guy and you know, she is up against the wall or whatever, you know what I mean, while the guy's talking to her. And then at some point he kind of like turns his back, you know what I mean, like to everybody. So we can't, we just see his back and the queen seems to be crouched down or something like, I mean, like literally it's anywhere and everywhere that they be getting their freak on. So in order to be ready, like they wake up in the morning, brush their teeth, <laughs> put on some lotion, some deodorant and use the bathroom and by using the bathroom it's not enough to just you know go number two shall we say they will use their bottle it's a douche bottle um ideally you know because the, the comment that i had seen asked like oh do they use like water bottles they don't there's no vending machines in prison some people do get bottles somehow from like a visitation or something like that and you're not even really allowed to take things back from visitation but they might be cool with the guard and the guard lets them just have it while they're drinking it or something or they somehow sneak it back i don't know how they do you know different things but uh so some people have bottles but it's not very common so ideally what you'd actually use is like an old bottle uh, from something else like lotion that you cleaned out the bottle me myself when i was in there i had a conditioner bottle <laughs> Uh, the VO5 conditioner is what is sold. Um, there's like three different types of brands that were, you know, in there. But the only one that I recognized and liked was VO5. I've used it out here. So, of course, I bought it in there. It's more expensive in prison than it is out here. But that's not the point. So, you know, VO5, the top of it, it has like those little points that are like... <laughs> <laughs> where the lid is if you take the lid off there's like these little points obviously that kind of like hurts so I took nail clippers and clipped those points off so it's just like a regular circle but how they did it cuz like me since we just you know getting all deep and personal me personally I am a very clean person and I like to just make sure everything is perfect I don't want the thought to be the same like I if you're doing one thing to me you should never be thinking about the other thing that's just me um i just don't like it to be a, a connected thought it is two different things you know what i'm saying it's two different things so i try to make sure that i'm always like clean when necessary but i'm not just prepping for a day long you know surprise type of situation 
for them that do do make sure to prepare like that, they actually will take like 40 minutes to an hour to do this process. So, for example, the one queen, I call her Monica, uh, she was telling me about her situation, because she actually was just being nosy. This is actually after I was already with Cam, and she's just like, you know, oh yeah, so, um, uh, how do you be preparing for that and all of this stuff, blah, 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 because I know y'all be getting it in every night when I'm in the cell with my man, you know, we doing it all the time, blah, blah, and I like to prep in the morning, and I had already heard somebody else tell me that they prep in the morning, and mind you, Monica, she was single, and she definitely was a loose hoe, because she told me, <laughs> and I could see, you know what I mean, like, her dealing with this person, and going, creeping up in the cell with that person, and then having two guys come into the cell, like, you know, another day, or later the same day, but but I'm not judging, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. So, and then also I know the environment. I know how it's like, you don't even have to be pursuing it. That's where sometimes it can kind of get tiring because if whether you're in the mood or not, whether you want the attention or not, like, it's always directed at you. It's not like you're trying, you don't need to really actually try to get attention. They just come to you, like, all the time. But anyway, she, she was telling me that, First, you know, thing in the morning, she'll get the bottle and she'll pump the water into her one time and, uh, you know, do the biz. And she'll do that, like, a couple times until it's just, like, water coming out. But then that's not good enough for her to make sure that she's, like, completely, I guess, cleared out for the day. Because maybe you'll feel fine for, like, an hour or two or something like that. But, you know, by the afternoon or something, you know, who knows. But... In order to avoid that, after she's already, like, having water leave her body, she will then do it again, but try to get, like, the whole bottle. Well, she said, she, and I thought that she, okay, let me just tell you. Katrina, the tranny that I was in the cell with, she told me that she used to stick the bottle all the way up inside of her in order to pump the water in and make sure it's really up there to flush out that stuff. But I thought she was lying because Katrina used to, like, say things for shock value all the time. And um, she was a liar anyway. But then, talking to Monica, she said the same fucking thing. And that's where I was like, y'all people are crazy. Like, I'm not... When I was doing my business, just the tip of the bottle, you know what I mean, was going in to make sure there was one. And different people are different because then there was another queen that I was cool with at the state facility, the first facility that I was at. And she used to say that she doesn't even squirt that much in. She said, like, a lot of queens, they, this is just girl talk. Just the same as, like, you know, regular girls have their girl talk or whatever. The gays, and, you know, they talk about periods and whatnot. The gays, this is just girl talk. Like, literally, they just be talking about the, the dishing process. Because <laughs> you know that everybody's got to do it. It's like, you know, we, you know, we, we all queens. We all girls. So... How you keeping yourself clean? And then also it gets around for the bitches that are nasty, that don't properly like keep up with that area. That definitely gets around. Like, you know, people will know who is nasty and who isn't. You know what I'm saying? For me, I had a reputation of being like the best sex that these guys would have because a couple of different guys would say that. Each one said the same thing. So I know that I'm good at what I do. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but um kidding but not kidding but uh anyway the queen mint is what i call that queen at the the first facility she said that she didn't the average queen usually squirts like as much water as you can up there but she actually would just usually try to do like a like a pinch i guess like just like a little to i guess like for the suction to go up and come down or something but i've i tried that but i i like to just but regardless of what i'm doing i'm not shoving the whole bottle up my butt okay <laughs> it's reserved for two things um a release of waste and toxins <laughs> and an entrance of absolute joy and pleasure <laughs> okay and you know some what 
stretching, I guess, some light stretching, <laughs> or with the right guy, some heavy stretching, but anyway, so yeah, that's, that is how a single queen preps for the day, you know what I mean, a day of sex, is that they make sure, oh, well, Monica, she was saying that she'll, after she's, you know, getting out just water from her body, then she'll do it like two or three I think she said even four more times, which is so crazy. I wonder if that's kind of like healthy because keep in mind, this is not like um, out here, you prep for a night out at the club or a, a, a booty call on Friday or something like that. This is a daily ritual, literally like brushing your teeth or brushing your hair or, you know what I mean, taking a shower. If you take showers every day, which you should, you know, it's literally like that or some guys how they shave every morning or something like that. This is a daily routine in prison for the queens, for the average queen. And regardless, because if you're single, you're doing it because you never know who you're going to hook up with that day. It's just how it is. And which is why I say that I'm not surprised I'm like the only gay guy on YouTube talking because I think the average gay person probably has a worse story. I live near a train. The average gay person in prison, I personally feel like, I personally feel like has a worse story to tell than mine because I took the route of isolation. I ended up getting a husband. I was trying not to corrupt myself. You know what I'm saying? And even then, I still, I mean, I still have some skeletons in the closet. I still got dirty laundry under the bed. You know what I mean? To, to share. It's not like I'm squeaky clean perfect, but I'm not the typical case is what I'm getting at. Like the t typical gay person, homosexual queen, whatever, in prison, uh, probably couldn't even give you a ballpark number of how many people they've been with, you know, just literally because it's way too many, <laughs> way too many, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, but, um, regardless of whether you're single or with somebody, you'll be doing a daily prep. So it seems a little excessive to me to every day shove a bottle up your butt in addition to a dick, mind you, but a bottle up your butt and then squirt all that water in there. But her in particular, the reason why I've stayed so long on her and I haven't gotten to this point is she said that she would actually, after she, when she's at this part of the process, she would stick the bottle in her, um, I don't know, either standing up, probably already standing up, maybe, I would think, because I don't think that you can do that sitting down. I, I just don't think so. And she probably already was standing up because she said that after she does that, she'll stand up and like squish around her stomach and try to let it like marinate and stuff, you know what I mean? And hold it for however long, you know, a couple minutes or whatever, and then do it. And she would repeat that process like two to four times, two, two, three, four times. I'm like, that is crazy, you know what I'm saying, to me. And I would think that, I mean, too much of anything is never good for you. And it's definitely good to clean yourself out and, and whatnot. And personally, I think that this is probably why men, especially straight guys, are so susceptible to like uh, colon cancer in er, late ages, late later years in life, because they're so, you know, cautious about touching their butt. And you have a lot of straight guys. I found this out from having so many girlfriends, like friends of mine, that they don't even be wiping their ass, let alone cleaning their ass, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's bacteria and build up over years, like, layered upon layered, like, it's just gross. It, not only on the outside, but on the inside, like, you know, or caked around your walls and stuff, that's just disgusting. So, I mean, it's definitely a benefit to cleaning yourself, but where I think that it is too much is like, that's a lot of water to be pumping into you daily. And by the way, my mama bear queen, um, TC, she, that I was in the cell with and she was like showing me the ropes or whatever, she at one point said that she was having trouble using the bathroom and she stopped douching because she said that she had been doing it for the like literally every day for the past three years she hasn't gone to the bathroom without using the bottle you know and i told her i was like that i don't think that that's good you know like you do need some um what is it secretion like oils you know what i mean lubricant like back there that your body naturally uh creates for itself so if you're 
rinsing that clean all the time, I just don't think it's good. And then for your organs and stuff, I don't think that that's good. But hey, it's the price to pay for being, you know, ready to go all the time. And so that's a single queen, but then a married queen, it's pretty much the same thing. Like, I don't have too much extra. Oh, we're at 20 minutes. But I don't have too much extra really to add. It's kind of the same thing. Like, when I was in the cell with Cam, the only difference that I would say is to uh, add to that comment. She had said, like, do you do it in private or do you do it in front of your man? It is, I always, like, 100% of the time <laughs> try to be private with that because um I don't want you associating that with what we're about to do you know what I mean like I just don't like and then I was all I've in there I developed like a skill to try to like cut down on the smell actually to just eliminate it altogether not even cut down on it but um like flushing as soon as it hits, <laughs> you know what I mean, like beforehand actually, so it actually kind of like sucks it, you know what I mean, and there's like no smell, <laughs> and that uh, habit, I guess, has stuck with me even out here, but, um, so just keep in mind, for the times that obviously like it's like you're locked down, we're locked down for the compound shakedowns or whatever, for the big massive shakedowns, or just for two two nights in a row or something whenever we're just locked down and you know we don't have no privacy or it could even just be like a regular count time and it's just kind of like you know both in the mood or whatever but we might have ate earlier like you know lunch or something like that or cooked bowl pizzas or something um yeah i i would always try to have some privacy a lot of times Cam, I'd ask him to step out or something like that. But also, he really wasn't, you know, too concerned about it. And a lot of people, they really get so used to... You're always in the cell with somebody. Even if you're not in the cell with somebody that you're dealing with in that kind of way, you're in the cell with somebody, like, all the time. You know what I mean? For years at a time. You get used to just... having to adjust with no privacy. You know, it's just the lifestyle. Like, prison is actually a lifestyle, which sucks. And I think that adds to, just a little thing, I think that adds to the recidivism, the pe people coming back and stuff, because not only all the obvious things that people already know, it's like, you know, it, the odds are stacked against you when you come out because who wants to hire you and you don't have no money and, you know, it's just all these obstacles or whatever. But the other component, I think, that people don't really recognize people out here and people from prison, I don't think recognize this, is the social aspect of it. There is, you, whether you mean for it or not, uh, whether you want it or not, just purely based off of living, existing in a specific type of environment, you do develop a lifestyle. It's just what it is. Like, you know, being in the city, in the country, a college student versus a working person, you know, a married person versus a single person. It's a lifestyle. Like, in prison, you really become part of, like, a, a, a prison lifestyle. And, yeah, and as a gay person, that is definitely... That's how you, um... <laughs> get ready to have sex all day, you know? And Cam and I, we were definitely having sex every day. I have been sexually active since I was 14 years old. Not a lot, but like 14 and then again at like 16 and then I wasn't like active active until I was like 19, I would say. And then I've just been like sexually active just like a regular person um until now. But even in all that time, you combine all my my one night stands and little relationships here and there that lasted a couple months and a couple months and whatever combine all of that together cam and i have had more sex with each other than i have had with all anybody combined combine all the all of those experiences like we was getting it in every day two times a day at least and then sometimes three or four times <laughs> And it was the full on, you know, deal. Like, yeah, we was really, really into each other. And that's why I miss him so much. You know, and I'm somebody that's pretty picky about the guys that I'm with. Cam is like perfection. You could definitely say I'm dick whipped. <laughs>
Alright, y'all, but I'm done, and hopefully this video is a little entertaining and, uh, you know, educational. I don't know. But thank you for your comments. I love your comments. I'm going to start, like, re reading over the comments that I, I've gotten and uh, try to, like, answer them in the form of video. So I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.